tell someone going through the emotions of, of despair, hopelessness, and pain that he or she will get through it is something that seems to require a warrant, like experience, age, wisdom, example, or authority. What direction are you coming from here, and do you think this is a topic you could have covered in your youth? Well, it is a topic that comes out of um, a lot of years as a pastor. Um, as, as any other pastor, I find myself oftentimes talking to people uh, after a funeral, uh, in the hospital, always uh, at worship services. You know, but it seems to me one out of every five person, people is having some kind of crisis. Um, and so I, d I don't know if I would have known what to say um, 30 years ago when I first got into preaching. Uh, but over the years, um, this, this mantra of hope, this survivor's creed has become really an important tool uh, to tell somebody you're going to get through it. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be quick. I'm not saying it's going to be painless. But here's, here's what I think the Bible says, and that is that God can use this mess you're in for something good. But don't, don't despair, but don't be foolish either. I, kinda, you know, I think the challenge anytime we're helping somebody through a tough time is to uh, give the right amount of hope without doing so flippantly or being disrespectful. Uh, but without going so deep, they get lost too. So it's, it's a... It's, it's a pastoral coming alongside and nurturing people uh, that, that has to happen. You've already mentioned elements of your survivor's creed, which, uh, which contains very simple but very powerful truths. How did you come up with that? It is a war against despair because what, what, uh, what I've noticed is that when we go through tough times, our enemy is hopelessness. Our enemy is despair. Uh, if we can believe that, number one, there is an end to this struggle, and number two, there's a purpose in this struggle, we'll be all right. It's when we don't think it'll ever end, and it's when we don't think it has any purpose that is purely random, that's when we make bad decisions. Now, I talk about bad decisions. I'll talk about uh, treating our pain with uh, some type of chemical. Uh, or, or even having, you know, considering suicide um, or walking out on a covenant like marriage or even turning our back on a good job because uh, we're not thinking clearly. So, so helping people think clearly is really an important part of getting people through a tough time. My son and I read the chapter on gratitude as part of our discipleship this morning. He actually highlighted the passage that reads, uh, to reflect on your blessings is to rehearse God's accomplishments. Gratitude does to anxiety what the morning sun does to valley mist. It burns it up. What was interesting was as we left the coffee shop, that's just what was happening. Uh, the fog was burning off. And he said to me, I'm grateful to be able to see and understand that this is what gratitude does. Uh, so explain how that works to us, how having gratitude in the midst of desperate trials lifts the fog. Well, the reason I put the gratitude chapter in there in the study of Joseph is because of all things, Joseph, as you know, since you read the chapter, named his two sons after God's goodness. Uh, if I remember correctly, one of them is named God made me fruitful and the other God made me forget. I think I, I need to go check to be sure. But, but it's what a remarkable thing. Here's a guy who's been through so much difficulty and yet he honors the goodness of God in the naming of his sons. It's a gesture of gratitude. Uh, gratitude does that. It burns off the sadness. It burns away the discouragement. By choosing to be grateful, I'm focusing not so much on what I've lost, but on what I have. It's nothing new, profound, you know, that no one's not said a thousand times, but it's so essential when you're in a time of struggle you tend to become uh, self-focused, to forget all the good things that God has done. The quickest way out of the valley of despair is by taking that trail that has the sign that says, be grateful. Find something for which you're grateful. Focus on that and you'll find your spirit lift and you'll find yourself walking out of the valley of despair.